What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So as you guys know, we ended up bending trailing arms and I did not make a pass in the 67. We bent trailing arms on another car that had the same exact trailing arms as this and he had a 169 60 foot, which is very lazy for these cars. So I knew if I even tried to make an attempt to make a pass, I was gonna bend something and hurt something. So this thing has not even made a pass yet. Worked that hard for it to pretty much sit on the lift and uh, not do anything. And yes, right now it is on the lift that it fell off of, but that's as high as we're going right now. Since then, we have changed our mind a million times on what we're doing for trailing arms. I was gonna build my own set and then realized I don't have the time to do that. We were gonna buy a set of Toms, like what my dad has in the black car, because those work very well. Um, we ended up going with, this is our trailing arm collection we have now. We ended up going with, I'm gonna put these van steels on. We now run this three bolt hub and that car and another car. Um, usually they have these stock style bearings and then this is another set of van steels. These are actually going on the silver car. But we are running these and we had to spend a day at Steve at Drag Vet's shop to make these work with what we're gonna do. So since we are running the six link, um, we got to have the piece on top right here to bolt the six link to. That's where we bolt the actual drive shaft loop. One right here, you can tell how this bracket gets bolted to the actual trailing arm itself. Um, Steve's got a jig to where we weld this on here. This is what holds the lower camber rods and the bottom side of the axle loop so if this thing breaks an axle it will not tear up the storage bins on that car like we have on the black car these are cast steel and i wanted to preheat these before i actually welded them all together that's why at steve's i only tack welded them um you just using his jig getting everything where it needs to go and then here i will wheel the torch up to my welding table preheat these to i don't know i'm just gonna preheat them to something any anything better than what they are now and uh, weld them up and probably MIG weld these because it's going to be hard to get the TIG welder in there. And that's some thick stuff. So we'll probably uh, just MIG weld those on. And then we can put the bearings in, put our brakes on, and put them back on the car. We've also been working on the silver 69 that my mom races. Um, this thing has been very good, but it's actually getting a new engine at some point in time. Whenever that thing's done. But put brakes on it. And then that's when we realized we had an issue with the rear because these are just stock arms and had stock 19 spline output shafts in it, which those things are very weak and tend to break a lot. So we upgraded them to this kit that I just showed you right here. These are upgraded 31 splines from Tom's differentials. Um, this is still gonna use the factory style camera rod mount and then um, we're gonna have to make something for a half shaft loop. These are gonna go in there, and we've got brake brackets that TBM actually made us to fit these. We don't have to custom make our own bracket like I had to do with these. And those should go right on there, and that thing should be ready to go. So I'm gonna move all these to the welding table and get to welding on these. I got, let's see, four of them to weld on, which it shouldn't take too long. And then we'll start putting hubs in them, put them back on the car, and I don't know if we're gonna make it on the dyno. We got some dyno tests we wanna do. We might make it on the dyno in this video. If not, it'll be a video in the future.
All right, so you guys watched me preheat these and hopefully they are now slowly cooling. So now here, well, it was sunny. The sun went behind a cloud. They were already tack welded. I cleaned the tack welds up and threw some fat beads on there. I am definitely not a professional MIG welder, but uh, they turned out all right and hopefully they won't be going anywhere. Um, so like I said, like I was saying, we preheated them. I just heated them until they were a little blue. I didn't really take an exact temperature. This is cast steel. Supposedly you're supposed to preheat it before you weld it. Only thing I've ever welded cast steel was exhaust manifolds when we do turbo stuff on LS manifolds. Like when we use truck manifolds and weld V-bands on them um, when we build turbo stuff. So that's the only time I've ever welded cast steel and uh, I just preheated them a little bit, welded them up and there's multiple ones out there that I've done that have not cracked yet. So. Hopefully these will be good to go. Like I was saying, the half shaft loop will go on like that. And then uh, we've got the three bolts drilled here for the wheel bearing. These are the factory four bolt holes. Um, but yeah, these should be ready to go here in a little bit. Going to get them uh, put together and hopefully get them on the car. Um, real quick, I'll show you. This is my grandpa 64 that he has had. I'm gonna say, I don't know when he got it. It's been over 50 years. I wanna say early 70s he bought this car. Um, I don't know where my dad's at. He's somewhere out here. He would know. But uh, he just redid this thing probably about four or five years ago. He painted it maroon way back in the day and then painted it back uh, to the midnight blue, I believe it's called. It's still got all the original interior in it. And then that is the original miles on the car, 49,000. But yeah, I'm going to get back in the garage and get back to work and put these things together. Hopefully get the 67 rolling and... Uh, possibly get it moving on its own. guys like always nothing is going according to plan let me show you what we got going on here so these are the trailing arms we're putting on i've actually already got one on i'll show you that in a second um these are the outer shafts or yeah you're going to call it an outer shaft the half shaft bolts to here this slides into the hub and then bolts on right here what i was supposed to do was put this half inch spacer in here um behind the brake mount and that was supposed to give me the exact spacing that i needed to be able to fit this in with that aluminum spacer and everything would go according to plan i don't fully understand if this is going to add a half inch to our track width or if this is going to keep our track width the exact same as the old trailing arms steve explained it to me real quick right right before i left and i thought i understood him but Obviously I didn't. I mean, I know why he runs the spacer. I don't know if that's gonna make it a little bit wider or make that exactly what it was. Um, the reason I don't wanna put that on, this thing was very close to rubbing on the quarter panels when we had those on. And actually when I had a set of slicks on it to drive it to the body shop, um, we rubbed right there. So if I can get rid of a half inch of our track width on each side, um, I might be able to put a good tire on this thing and that would help us out tremendously getting this thing down the racetrack especially its first couple passes make sure everything's good and then put the bias plies on and try to work on our setup that way 
Not saying that it won't work on the bias flies. It's always nice to make new passes on a set of good tires. That way you can take spinning out of the equation and get the car figured out, make sure it goes straight, make sure it goes down the racetrack, and then work on the bias flies and get it hook. Um, but anyways, what I got going on is right now, without that half inch spacer in here, this piece is too long and I can't bolt it. Well, I mean, I could bolt it up to the half shaft, but I have no spacing in there, which I gotta have spacing in the spool, you can't see it right now, but I've gotta have spacing from the inner shaft to the spool because these are floating axles and I can't bolt my drive shaft loop up to here. I'm pretty much a half inch off. So I need to call Steve tomorrow and uh, see if I can do this a different way and take a half inch off of here, which will bring this in further to here and essentially, hopefully, narrow the track width a little bit i don't know i need to see i need to see if i can do that i'm not sure i'm thinking about it in my head right now and that might throw off my toe i might not be able to get the right spacing in front for the toe um let's see because that would cause it to be towed out because with the old trailing arms i had no spacers on the inside so no spacers in here, which means this thing was towed in as much as it could be. And that's how I got my alignment. So I need to call Steve and figure out if I'm going to be able to do that or not. Um, so I'm going to call it quits right here. These are the trailing arms we're going to run, the setup we're going to run. We just have to figure out if I have to run that spacer or if I can do it a different way to try to gain a little bit shorter of a track width to hopefully run some sticky tires. But I'm going to get this thing on the ground for you guys. Not gonna happen. I wanna get this video out and uh, give you guys an update. I've had people send messages asking for updates on this thing because you haven't seen it since we ripped it apart. In the meantime, we have put some good brakes on my mom's car. I think I already told you guys this. We got those all bled. Motor is supposed to be on the dyno this week. They had a problem with oil pressure last week. Um, this is gonna be a totally different engine setup than what we run in those cars. Gonna see if something different works. That is the update in the shop right now. Need to get the 67 to the racetrack. Um, I kind of burnt myself out on this thing, working on it nonstop for a month, but uh, we've got to get back on it. Got to get it to the track. I was hoping to have this thing on the ground today and possibly to the track this week, but I think we're going to just get it on the ground, do some dyno testing with it, and then get it to the racetrack. We've got some things we need to try out on this thing, but, but that's going to wrap it up. So thank you guys for watching and we'll see you in the next one.